What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content here on my channel, then make sure you hit the like button, and make sure you hit subscribe so you can help decide what direction the content on my channel goes in, in the foreseeable future. So, I was having lunch earlier today, and a thought crossed my mind about Infinity War, and I was sitting here thinking, I wonder how people will react to it. Because if the Infinity War movie follows the comic book material, I think it'll be one of those films that people won't really grasp what they saw until after they leave the theater. And they're on their way home, and they're talking about the movie, and then the gravity of what they saw starts to sink in. I think it's going to be absolutely mind-boggling. And I think the reason for that is because of the fact that, to my knowledge, and I've seen a lot of different movies, there's never really been a movie on the scale of Infinity War assuming that all the hype is to be believed. For the most part, when it comes to movies that deal with like magic and sorcery and you know reality warping and powers and things like that, like they're always grounded to a degree. I mean, Doctor Strange was kind of as crazy as it got in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in terms of abilities, but even looking at like Fox movies, the X-Men movies or the Fantastic Four movies, the Silver Surfer, you know, had cool powers, but it wasn't anything insane. It wasn't anything outrageous. I'd say probably the most interesting display of his power came when he absorbed a uh, rocket into his board, but that's really more the fact that Fox doesn't know how to make good movies. But with regards to the, the things that we've seen in terms of powers, they're grounded, they're relatable. I mean, take for example, Cyclops. You, know, you sit down and you watch an X-Men movie, you watch X-Men Last Stand, or you watch X-Men 1 or 2, or you know any of the movies that he was in, and you see Cyclops' optic beams, all right? He shoots his optic beams at an, at an object, and the object flies back, or something along those lines, or maybe it gets completely incinerated. But it's easily digested. It's like, okay, he has these optic beams, and they're basically a concussive force. It's like getting punched really, really, really hard. And and the result is that you're just kind of sent flying or you're totally incinerated or something along those lines. But the idea is that it's still relatable to a, to a degree. Storm would be Fox's gateway to making a character with just an insane amount of power. The Phoenix, sure, but even then with the Phoenix, it's still kind of out there. With Storm, it'd be a whole different kettle of beans. I mean, say for example, that Fox decided to make an X-Men movie where Storm's powers just went awry, where Storm just got really pissed off one day and just decided to just lay waste to the whole of humanity. She could do it. I mean, remember, Storm Storm's powers are insane. She controls the elements down to the molecular level. She can't control the earth and she cannot control fire, but everything else she can control. She can control pressure. She can make your head explode. I mean, she can do any number of things with regards to the elements of the earth. I mean, if she were to lose her mind and just go crazy, you wouldn't be watching an X-Men movie you'd be watching an end of the world movie because then Storm would start conjuring these one mile tall tsunamis that would just descend on the coastal regions of the world and just start obliterating these cities. She'd create dust bowls. She'd freeze over entire continents. I mean, she would alter, she would fundamentally alter the ecosystems of the world to the point that it could be virtually uninhabitable. If you think that's impossible, go and look up something called the Latuya Bay Tsunami. It was a tsunami that happened in 1958 in Alaska and the tsunami was 1700 feet tall. It was taller than the Eiffel Tower. It was one of the craziest displays in the history of the world. And it wasn't even that long ago, it was 1958. But again, that's the kind of thing that we're talking about, but you don't really see that. And even if you did, you could still grasp it because you would be like, okay, well, she's just manipulating weather patterns. She's just making it snow for like a year, or she's just making these giant tsunamis, or she's creating, you know, tornadoes in Los Angeles, wiping the city off the map. She's just doing these things. But Infinity War, it'll be absolutely bonkers and absolutely insane. I mean, not only are we gonna see this huge plethora of heroes or characters, Characters that we've seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe so far, we're going to see characters that we haven't even seen yet. Like, they haven't even been introduced yet. Characters that'll probably be introduced in Infinity War. But that begs the question, with everything we've seen so far, are people ready for something like Infinity War? And I would say no. <laughs> I mean, people are excited. You know, I'm excited. But I don't think people are ready to grasp something in that extreme. Here's a really good example. Imagine that the Infinity War movie's taking place, you know, and imagine that we get to this massive battle with... Thanos, and Thanos has the Infinity Gauntlet, the Incredible Hulk, and Captain America, and Iron Man, who are all trying to fight him at the same time. And, you know, Iron Man shoots his repulsor, be uh, repulsor beams, and Thanos turns the beams into water. And then imagine, like, the Incredible Hulk goes to attack Thanos, and Thanos grabs him and throws him 65 million years in the past. Imagine that Captain America goes to throw a shield, and Thanos turns the shield into flowers, or snowflakes, and they just kind of disperse harmlessly into the air. I mean, that's what we're talking about, just this insane display of power. The Scarlet 
witch wants to use her, you know, magic powers or whatever it is, you know, and he just kind of turns her into like a tree stump or something like that, you know, or he sends her a thousand years into the future or something along those lines. And even then, that's still kind of tangible. I mean, in, in Guardians of the Galaxy, we saw a celestial. That was the whole story where the collector was talking about the beings that use the power gems and the infinity stones and so on and so forth. And, you know, we saw one of them who was just like wiping out life on this planet or something like that. All right, imagine an army of those, all right, those celestials. Imagine 50 or 60 of those celestials powerless against Thanos. Imagine that they're throwing planets at him, just hurling planets at Thanos and nothing's happening. He's just casting them all off. Imagine that the physical manifestation of the universe, the universe comes down in physical form and tries to fight Thanos and can't win, ends up being defeated. I mean, that's what we're talking about. That's an insane display of power. And that's what I think we're gonna see in Infinity War. And just, that, to me, that's just mind boggling because we've never seen anything like that in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Doctor Strange is as close as we got, but that was just some small time reality warping. That was just bending people's perception of the world around them. It was just magic. That's all that was. I mean, you saw the time stone, you know, where he kind of rewound time and different things like that, but that's just surface stuff. That's small time stuff. That's nothing compared to the stuff that Thanos can do with the time stone. I mean, it's crazy. Imagine, imagine like he starts de-aging people. Imagine that like some somebody like Scott Lang shows up, you know, and Scott Lang tries to fight Thanos and Thanos just turns him into an infant. He literally winds his life back to the point that he's an infant just sitting there and people are laughing at him. I'd laugh. <laughs> but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just a crazy display of power. I mean, it's almost indescribable in terms of how it would all go down. You know, now, of course, the ending of Infinity Gauntlet was actually pretty awesome in comparison to everything else that was going on. And again, I think the movie is going to come down to Nebula. I think she's going to be the one that's basically going to bring the entire conflict to an end just because of the fact that we don't have Adam Warlock yet. And so I think this is when Nebula is going to get her time to shine. I won't spoil it too much, but uh, I mean, at this point, the story's been around for 25 years or something along those lines. It's been around for a pretty long time. So most everybody knows what happens in Infinity Gauntlet. But the fact remains here that this movie is going to be something that I think is going to change the world of comic book movies. But that begs the question, where do you go after something like that? I mean, it's like Lord of the Rings, right? Like Lord of the Rings came out. It was nuts. It was Fellowship of the Rings. It was Twin tower or the two towers it was the return of the king you know and then it's like where do you go from there well you try to make the hobbit and you just don't do as well but in marvel in the marvel cinematic universe where do you go after infinity war like what do you do after a story on that scale annihilation and Annihilation was a pretty cool story. It was a story where this villain named Nihilus basically invaded the main Marvel Universe and tried to wipe out all life in existence. He literally did it with an army of bugs. It was called the Annihilation Wave. The problem with that is that Marvel has either owns or has only introduced maybe like a quarter of the people who were supposed to be in that story. There's no Richard Rider. I mean, there's Peter Quill, but there's no Moon Dragon. There's no Phyla Vell. There's Ron and the Accuser, but he's dead. There's no Scroll Race. There's none of that stuff. Like none of those, none of those things have been introduced. Creating that movie right now, immediately after Infinity War, really wouldn't work. You know, just because of the fact that the grand scale of the conflict wouldn't be there. I mean, Annihilation was designed to be a story that dwarfed the the events of Civil War. The Civil War was like this little skirmish that was taking place on Earth. Meanwhile, the universe was being totally obliterated by Annihilus' forces. You know, and so because of that, it was it was designed to be this massive, grandiose thing. Now, the problem with that is Galactus was basically the one who ended the Annihilation wave. Marvel doesn't have the rights to use Galactus in film form, so they either have to find another way or not do that story at all. But in truth, Infinity Gauntlet stands is really like the, the creme de la creme, the precipice of Marvel's cosmic storytelling. And so I don't really know what you do after that. I have no idea where you go, but I do know this. I think that Infinity War is going to come out and I think it's gonna get rave reviews. People are gonna talk about how awesome it is, but I don't think that people will be able to fully digest what it is that they saw until after the movie's done and they go home and they think about it. And then they're just gonna sit back and they're just gonna think, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go see that again. I know I will. Like, I'll probably go see it three or four times, to be honest. I mean, it's going to be a great movie. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been really, really excited about the whole thing. But nonetheless, I just kind of want to get my thoughts out there and kind of talk to you guys about, you know, Infinity War, at least how I view it. I think it's going to be absolutely bonkers. I think it's going to be a movie that changes comic book films forever. It may be something so great that Marvel can never do anything like it again. And maybe it'll be their swan song. And maybe it'll just kind of be all down, you know, downhill from here. I have no idea. Or maybe it'll just get better. You know, I have no clue. Um, uh, everything's been awesome up to this point. No reason to believe it wouldn't be awesome afterwards, but still, you know, it's just, it's crazy. 
<laughs> anyway, let me know down in the in the comments section, what do you guys think Marvel will do after Infinity War? I know that they've, they've talked about phase four and they said that like phase four won't really be a phase. It'll likely be just a whole bunch of, you know, individual films. I don't know. I mean, at this point, they're probably not going to announce anything until after Infinity War part two comes out. And so that's probably 2019 uh, before they actually make an announcement on what phase four is supposed to be. In any event, let me know down in the, in the comments section what you guys think phase four will be, what movies you think they'll come out with. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I will catch you all later. Peace.